Greetings and welcome back to another edition of the End Time Watchman. The title of our program today is Heaven is for Real. Heaven is for Real. Just before he ascended, he, Jesus, back into heaven, he said to us in the book of John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 3, he says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And this is Jesus talking about heaven. Jesus is there reassuring us that heaven is for real. It is not a myth. It is not a fairy tale. It is a real literal place where the Bible says only the righteous will go. You know, over the centuries that have passed since, God has shown uh, numerous people from all walks of life uh, a, gl a glimpse of heaven through dreams, uh, visions, uh, near-death experiences, uh, and uh, such like. Now, there are numerous amount of testimonies out there on the internet with people sharing their experiences. But for today, I've picked one out uh, just to share with you on this program today. It's from a, a gentleman who had a near-death experience. So watch and listen to what he saw and, uh, and experienced uh, when his spirit left his body. I couldn't catch my breath. It was getting shallower and shallower, and I can remember saying to myself, I am dying. And then his blood pressure dropped. And I looked at the doctor and I said, what's wrong with him? His heart stopped. And he says, well, we need to intubate your husband right now, or else he could die. And then we start doing the chest compressions. Dean Braxton's system was shutting down. It started as a routine procedure to remove a kidney stone. Now he was dying. Dr. Manuel Irigi was on duty in the critical care unit at St. Francis Hospital in Federal Way, Washington. He explains what went wrong. As it turns out with, with him, the antibiotic that he received was uh, not good for the bacteria. He was resistant. Dean's body went into multi-organ failure and his heart flatlined. Dr. Irigi's team worked furiously to revive him. Dean's wife, Marilyn, prayed. I did say to the Lord, I said, Lord, you said in your word that you've come to give Dean life and life abundantly. And I claim that abundant life for him. At times, the unit was in chaos as they worked to save Dean's life. But he was experiencing something very different. I wasn't afraid. It was like, I'm going home. Dean believes he went to heaven. When I first entered in, it was just bright. It wasn't so much what I saw as much as what I experienced. The first thing I perceived was everything is right. There's nothing wrong here. And I said, it's past peace. You know, there's, there's a scripture in the Bible in Philippians, the fourth chapter, that says, peace past understanding. That's what's going on there. It's landscape, but more, because everything's alive. Nothing's dead. I don't mean just live like grass. I mean, it's intelligent, it can move, you know, it thinks. And someone says, well, that's way out there. It was way out there for me, you know, I'll tell you the truth. We 
got a pulse. Dean says he felt like he was being pulled back into his body. Then he flatlined a second time. Again, he was in heaven. This time, he saw Jesus. The first thing that comes to me is he's bright, just like John says, he's brighter than the noonday sun. And the next phrase I say, I wish people could grab it, and it's this one, and we can look at him. And what you're looking at is not so much the physical part of it. You're really experiencing the love he has for you. And I tell people it's, it's like he only loves you and no one else. I saw him communicating to angels. He would just look at them. Communication there was thought to thought. They would acknowledge his receiving his information, bow before him like this, and then back out. And it was like, whoa. Dean admits he didn't want to come back. And I don't tell you the truth, I was happy. I was planning on staying, you know, and people always say, yeah, you know, didn't you love your wife and your children? Yes, I loved them probably more than I ever could. But I was thinking, you come here. You come here where everything is right. Then Dean saw family he hadn't seen in a long time. And yet, on the other side of Jesus was my family, my grandmother Mary, but with her were other relatives. And some I had recognized. I had been on this planet when they were here. But then there was generation after generation after generation after generation of those that accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior that helped to produce me on this planet. They came to greet me in, and it was like, God. While Dean was in heaven, Marilyn continued asking God for a miracle. I purposed in my heart that whatever the outcome, I was going to follow God all the way. After an hour and 45 minutes, Dean came back with a weak but steady heart rate. But the bacteria had done a lot of damage, and he had to go on dialysis. I did not think he was going to survive. I, and I, in a way, I, I told his wife, that, you know, now well, we have just to pray and, and wait because there is nothing else I can do. I believe in healing. I believe that God is a healer. And uh, I was trusting God for Dean's healing. Three days later, Dean woke up. He was so eager. We got to get people saved. We got to let people know about Jesus. Despite doctors' concerns that Dean's prolonged ordeal would leave him impaired or even worse, there are no signs that Dean even had a brush with death. He's the picture of health. In fact, the staff at St. Francis Hospital dubbed him the Miracle Man. It's a miracle that he's alive. There's no question about it. It is a miracle. Yeah, he's alive, that he's talking, that he has no brain damage. Uh, but but this, this is very exceptional because he was really, really dead for, for a long time. So what does a man do who's experienced heaven and still wants to be there. Dean says Jesus told him something that keeps his feet firmly planted. I felt like he was saying, I need you there more than I need you here. And I came to understand then how important it was for me to complete what God had put me on this planet to do. The bottom line is, until I'm finished here, you know, and I cannot go back home, I tell people most of the time, I'm on my way home. Don't get me wrong, I'm on my way home. This is the pathway my father says I have to go to get home. What a wonderful place heaven must be. The Bible describes heaven as a place where all crying will cease to exist, where there will be no more dying, uh, no more sorrows or pains, where we will live forever, we will have eternal life there, uh, where there is no night but no sun either, because God will be the light. You know, it's also described as paradise, among other things. You know, it's a place of total and everlasting bliss. Heaven is a place to be after this life and this world ends. But along with the things that I've just mentioned, heaven is also a holy place.
totally free from evil and all that is evil and nothing or no one unclean can enter heaven. To get that clean, however, and pure requires the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood that washes whiter than snow. Salvation through Jesus Christ gives you that kind of a washing. Believing and surrendering your whole heart to him through confession of your sins gives you salvation. And receiving salvation is not about who you are or, or what you have or can do. It's simply about believing and trusting in Jesus Christ. That is why it says in Acts chapter 16 verse 31, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Will, not maybe or might. This opens the door to absolutely everyone to receive salvation and to be assured of a place in heaven. You can make that choice today, right now. So coming up next is my short pre-recorded message of salvation. At the end of it, you will have uh, the opportunity uh, to, to pray with me to receive salvation. Please listen and respond now, today, as tomorrow is not promised to you. Let's work on getting into heaven, because heaven is for real. Before I go, I would like to share with you the good news. The good news that you can be saved today from eternal destruction and given eternal life through Jesus Christ. He himself already paid the, the high and necessary price uh, for our salvation. So all we need to do is to ask him for it and accept it as a free gift. Why do I need salvation, you may ask? The simple answer is because we are all sinners. We were born and shaped in sin. Romans chapter 3 verses 10 it tells us, as the scriptures say, no one is righteous, not even one. And Romans chapter 3 verse 23 tells us why. It says, for everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. So left to us, we would all perish. But Romans chapter 5 verses 8 tells us, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. So because of Jesus and what he did, we have the hope of salvation packaged as a free gift for each and every one of us. Romans chapter six, verse 23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. No, that's good news so next question what can i do to be saved acts chapter 16 verse 31 says believe in the lord jesus and you will be saved romans chapter 10 verses 9 to 10 says if you openly declare that jesus is lord and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead you will be saved for it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. Will it work for you? Will it work for anybody? Yes. That is why it says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone, no one is exempted. So if you would like to make that all-important decision today for Jesus, I will help you with a short prayer of repentance. If you would like to say this prayer 
Just repeat it after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am sorry for all of my sins against you. Please have mercy on me. Save me and free me from my sins. Come into my heart along with your Holy Spirit. Wash me and make me whole. Thank you for saving me. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have said that prayer, welcome into the family of God. Continue to seek after God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your body and soul. And please feel free to, to share this video with your friends, uh, uh, with your family. Uh, share it as far and wide as you possibly can. There are no uh, restrictions, absolutely no restrictions on how uh, you can share any of our videos. All we ask is that you help us to reach the loss at all cost. So thank you for watching and thank you for listening. And I'll see you next time, if there is a next time. God wish you bless you and goodbye. Don't forget that to contact me for any reason, you can find me on Facebook by searching for Curtis Minister Roach. Minister Curtis Roach. Or our page, The End Time Watchman. Just leave me a message and I'll reply at my earliest. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel and be blessed by the hundreds of videos available to you. Please feel free to share any video to help us spread the good news of Jesus Christ. You can also follow me on Twitter at Roach underscore Curtis. Should the Lord continue to tarry, see you next time. God bless. Yeah, it's coming. Don't get left behind. Don't get left behind. Uh huh.